Hello and welcome to another Retro Core and today is a little bit different because I'm going to show you how to put together a TM Arcade Stick by TRFightStick.com Alright, so first thing we've got to do is get the cover ready and here it is this is going to be our cover which will be going underneath the plexiglass finish which fits on top of the joystick and here's the plexiglass finish. Now, as you can see, if we just put that flat, it is a perfect match for the template. Now, this is a template which I put together myself, but the measurements and so on actually came from the official uh, TR Fight Stick site. So I'm gonna put a, a description of the actual width and dimensions of this in the video description down below. All right, so first thing we're going to do is cut this template out. Now, I could use the knife, but I don't have a long enough ruler to go across the bottom, so I'm going to use it with scissors, but the knife will be used to cut out the circles. All right, so very simple. It's just a matter of cutting in a straight line. Okay, now that we've got that cut out, what we need to do now is get the holes cut out. Now we don't need to worry too much about these being nice and neat and tidy because when we put the buttons over them, this part of the button here is actually going to cover up the uh, the mess that we make. So basically all we got to do is make a hole within the white circle here. So it's not too bad actually. And for that we're going to use a good old knife. And yes, we do have a cutting board underneath it. So you don't have to go fast. Just take your time. Just make sure you stay within the white circle because if you go out of the white circle, then you're in trouble. You're really going to make a mess. So stay within the white circle. Don't be afraid to turn the paper around if need be. Okay, so there you can see we've got all the holes cut out. Now the next thing we've got to do is cut out the holes for the screws. Now the thing is, they're actually quite tiny and it's gonna be a real pain to cut those out. So what I suggest doing is just doing a little X cut here in the space. And what that will do is allow the screw just to push through without you know creasing the paper or anything like that. So it saves you having to cut it out. It's a much easier solution. And one over here as well. All right. So we are now ready to add the top to our joystick. So let's get the joystick itself. And here it is. It's a big heavy beast. All right, so that's our stick. And this is where our template is going to sit. All right, make sure the buttonholes are all nice and positioned correctly. Yes, they are. And then we're going to put the plexi on top of here. Now you want to make sure there's no dust on the, on the bottom of it because um, once this is on, you don't want to be uh, taking it off again. So make sure this is all nice and clean on the bottom. So I'm going to give this a bit of a wipe down before I put it on. So that's a bit of a weird jump cut. Here we are on another day. And you may notice that we now have some wiring harnesses connected up and we also have the Brook fighting board installed. And this is the universal fighting board from Brook. And basically what that will do is allow us to use this stick on many different machines, such as PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox Original, Xbox 360, Xbox One, Switch, PC, Neo Geo Mini, uh, PC Classics and Mega Drive Mini. Oh yes, so this stick is going to be universal and of course we can also use it on RetroPie as well uh, and our uh, PCs and stuff like that. No problem whatsoever. Okay, now I also got myself some new buttons. Now we do have original Sanwa buttons here. You can see these. Now I don't know if you know this but Sanwa actually do make PlayStation style buttons but I'm not going to be using those. I decided to go with an Astro City button configuration. Now, originally I wanted 
the uh, green and pink, but green are out of stock. So we're going to go with player two's configuration, which is blue and pink. So they will be the main buttons for here. And we also have to get some smaller buttons to fit in these sockets here and the ones down the side here. Now these are not Sanwa, but they apparently are from a Japanese company and they're very clicky. Take a listen. Yeah, so um, I'll put the measurements uh, down there at the bottom of the screen so you can see them. Uh, where are we going? Over here somewhere. Over here. Okay. So you know what uh, measurements of the buttons you need. But the Sanwa ones, they're standard uh, measurement size for uh, arcade sticks. So what we're going to do first is install these buttons into the uh, six slots over here. And they install very easily. Basically just uh, clip in. So put a blue one in here. We're going to, we want to try and get the um, the pins all the right way up, or the, or the same way up, I should say. So um, we'll have them, so all the pins are pointing upwards. There we go. Easy enough to get in. I'll put a red one here. No particular reason to have multicolors, just that uh, it was cheaper to get multicolor buttons in a, a set of one color, which is a bit strange. But that's just the way it goes. Doesn't really bother me. And we'll put a yellow one over here. So the next thing we want to do is get this cable here, which has a couple of break-offs on it. And we plug this in right down here. And this is going to be our start, home and select buttons right here. So in it goes. Okay, and we just uh, clip this one onto here, I believe. And put the yellow one on there. So that is our home select and start button wired up. So we've got a ground on each one of the uh, pins there. I'm not too sure if it matters which pin the ground goes on. Probably not. So the next cable we've got to connect is this one which has the pink, orange and yellow on it. And that's going to connect these switches here. So don't forget, we've got to connect one black up to each of the cables because that will be the ground. All right, they're all connected, yes. And this one, we want to just kind of connect it here to the center point on the uh, Universal Fighting Stick um, adapter board. So we want to connect that to the center. Make sure we get it the right way around. Okay, so that goes like this. Nope, like this. All right. So that is in there. So we'll tidy up those cables a little bit later on. So the next step is to get this short cable here with the black end and the white end. And we plug the black end into the Brook Fighting Adapter board here. And the white end goes into this socket here where it says uh, RSDP DPLS. All right. So let's get that connected up. And the same thing when you plug it into this connector, it only goes in one way, but it should be with the yellow cable closest to the Brook fighting board like this. All right. So that is in looking good. Next thing to do is get the actual buttons into the stick itself. So we'll just tip upside down there. I'll tip it the right way up and let's get the buttons ready. So I'm going to do pink on the top, blue on the bottom. I love these uh, official Sanwa buttons. They all come in their own little separate baggy. And if you can see it, hopefully you can see that. Sanwa, Sanwa. So they are official buttons. Um, yeah, we'll do a, uh, yeah, tell you what, we'll do pink on the top. We want to try and get all the pins the top end up, so it just makes wiring a little bit easier. And they just push in, or they should just push in. Here we go. Nice. All right, let's get them all connected up. We've now got all the buttons in and they're looking good. So the buttons can be a little bit tricky to get in, but if you push them down tight enough, you will get them in there. You'll hear a little click once you know they're in place. But yeah, 
feeling good. So now we've got to do is wire them up and we're going to do the uh, top section first. So you need the wire with um, the wiring loom with the white cable on. That's the easiest way to uh, notice. So let's uh, flip it over. Okay. And um, we want to connect these all up. So this is going to be our punches, I believe. And uh, we'll start off by connecting the uh, cables here. All right. So onto the pink buttons they go. And all the cables are of a different length, so you can kind of figure out which one comes next. It's brown, and then it's red, and then it's blue. And of course, you don't want to forget to connect the ground cables up again. They all come in different lengths, so the longest one goes on the farthest button. Very simple. Sometimes it can be a little tricky to get them lined up though. In you go. If you have trouble getting them lined up, don't push them too hard because you don't want to bend the pins on the actual button. Alright. Alright. And what we do is we connect this connector up here to the buttons labeled 4P, 3P, 2P and 1P. Of course, they're your punch buttons, if you're playing fighting games, that is. And it uh, only goes in one way, so you can't get it back to front. And there you go, we've got that all done. So now we've got to do the same thing again, but with the lowercase buttons, which will connect to the 4K, 3K, 1K and uh, 2K socket here, which is obviously um, for the kick buttons. All right. so. Again, we're going to use a cable with many different uh, cables coming off it. And of course, the longest one being yellow goes on the furthest button. All right, so let's get that one done as well. Okay, so the next step we've got to do is install the actual joystick. And we're going to be using a genuine Sanwa joystick here. Now, I've actually been up on there, but <laughs> you don't need to do that. Uh, the way to know that this is the correct way up is basically just make sure that your pin output here is pointing towards the uh, Brook fighting board. Now to get this connected, um, there was some screws already in the base here, which I've taken out and I'm going to be using those screws to connect the stick to the base. All right. Now it's going to be a little bit fiddly. So I'm going to have to kind of move it over half off the table and just get the first screw in there. Then once that's done, I can bring it back onto camera. Okay, we've got that done. Let's bring it back onto camera. And you can see it's in there nice and solid. So we're just going to tighten up the screws to make sure it's a nice tight fit. All right, because the last thing you want is your joystick flopping about. <laughs> Innuendos, here we come. Now it would be nice if we had some extra screws to uh, put in here just to keep this base a little bit more solid but to be honest I don't think you need them it's solid enough as it is but you know a nice bit of peace of mind but yeah, they're not needed okay so that's that and uh, let's see here we go we are on there looking good all right so what we're gonna do is put the ball on the top and we need our dust cover so on that goes and we'll get our ball on there. I'm going to use a black ball. Okay, let's get this on there. And I'm not going to use a collar for the actual stick itself. I think that's fine the way it is. Oh, I'll tighten that up later. But yeah, that feels good. All right. And um, yeah, so you can hear it click better when I take it off the table, just in case you thought it was broken. So um, we'll tighten up that ball a little bit. Where's my screwdriver? All right, so to tighten up a ball and joystick is very simple. You basically just put screwdriver in there and hold that while you spin the ball. Yeah, that's on nice and tight now. Okay, we're almost there. So we've got to connect up the joystick to the Brook fighting board, not a problem. It's just a simple case of connecting this cable. All right, so which side goes into the joystick now? Uh, let's see, I believe this is the side that goes into the joystick. 
because it has a little clicky thing here that clicks onto the end of the stick. And let's see, make sure we get it in the right place. Yep, that's on. And this should click into here. All right, we are done. The wiring for the joystick is all done. We're ready to go. Or are we? One more thing, we gotta connect the USB output or input on the joystick into the input on the Brook Fighting board. So let's quickly do that. Luckily, it comes with the cable you need. And it's a simple case of plugging one end into here. Simply put it in there and the other end into there. So uh, we'll twist it about a little bit and tidy up those wires in a moment. Would help if I had the USB the right way around. And there we go, we are in. All right, so we've got to figure out a way of tidying this up, but um, we'll do that in a moment. All right, okay, so almost done. So we're going to do a bit of uh, wire management in a moment. We're going to tie these up with a bit of cable ties, and then we're going to take the perspex off the bottom. All right, so I'll be back in just a moment. So we finally got the cables tidied down a little bit using these nice little clamps here, very cheap. You get, I don't know, it's the pack I bought. I got all these for 100 yen, so yeah, about $1.50 or a pound, something like that. Anyway, it makes it look a lot neater and tidy. So we're almost at the home stretch. We have got that nasty cover off the acrylic, so now the acrylic is nice and clean. And all we got to do now is add the feet to the bottom of the joystick. So let's just move the joystick over here for a moment. And let's get the feet onto the acrylic base. Now the feet are very simple to put on. Basically, you just have a little bolt here as a screw inside. So we take off the bolt and thread it through the positions here, 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 and here. There's four of them. Can't really go wrong, can you? So let's get these feet installed. I'll just do one quickly to show you how they go on. Very, very, very simple. Make sure you're putting them on the right way round, which this isn't, <laughs> okay? So you want it, uh, the base of the foot being on the side of the board, which doesn't have the acrylic popping up. So basically the side which has the bolts for the acrylic is the side which has the bolts for the feet. So we just put one foot in there Get the little bolt. Let's see, I hope you can see that. And um, yeah, there you go. And let's put the little nut on. Now you may need a pair of needle nose pliers to make sure that these bolts are fastened tightly. But uh, you might be able to do it with a finger and a screwdriver in the socket. And basically that's what it'll look like once it's done. So I'm gonna get these all four put on and then put the base back on the stick and we'll be ready to go. So are you ready to see the stick in action? Well, I've got it connected up to my Raspberry Pi 4 here, which I use for playing vertical shooters or tata shooters. And this just an half look the part. It looks really good right here. Um, okay, so I've already configured up the controls. Now, before I used to use this joystick down here, which was um, an Xbox uh, 360 Hori stick, Again, um, it's got the Sanwa buttons on here. It's fully customized. That's also a Sanwa stick as well. But um, I'd wanted something, you know, a bit more substantial for the arcade stuff. And this thing does not move. It is rock solid. Anyway, um, what I had to do is I had to go into the configuration files and delete some uh, files which were uh, related to the Hori stick because it wouldn't save the configurations for this. But once that was done and it was all set up, not a problem. So let's boot up the Raspberry Pi. Let's uh, switch on the power right now. Now, the way I've configured this Raspberry Pi is to have it in vertical orientation, but I haven't done the usual uh, flip the screen from the uh, base config, because if you do that, it's gonna really affect the performance. And even though this is a Raspberry Pi 4, I wanna get as much out of it as possible. So this has been, uh, had the screen flipped um, 
in configuration of the actual emulators and uh, the front end emulation station. Now the thing is, because this is a 4x3 monitor, uh, well I did use a 16x9 monitor but it looked really dumb. So I've got a 4x3 monitor and I couldn't get the uh, correct aspect ratio to work with the emulation station. So emulation station is kind of over here. Now when I did try and uh, get it to be centered or full screen, it just messed up all the time so it never did work. But anyway, as you can see we've now got all the buttons working. We have uh, the ability to uh, select the options here and um, we can also pause it and so on. So let's go into favorites and I'll show you a game which I came to know uh, recently which is really good. It's a title game and this is it. This is Grid Seeker. So let's start up. Now you will notice when the game comes on it will be the proper aspect ratio 4x3 vertical. It won't be like squashed over here like the uh, menu system is. And here we go. It's detected the joystick as you can see right there. And we should... Yep, yeah, ready to go. Perfect. Now I've uh, added some hotkeys so obviously we can pause it by pressing the hotkey. There so I've paused it. And we can also reset it. Uh, take off the pause first. And we can also reset it using the hotkey on the side or on the buttons on the back. Uh, these two other buttons here I've used as start and select or insert coin and start. So we can insert the coin. You see no problem there. And um, oh, press start. Now we can choose our plane. And as you can see, the joystick is working perfectly fine. This is our bomb. This is our fire. And it works absolutely flawlessly. The Brook um, adapter, what's it called again? The Universal Fighting Board has, has absolutely no lag on it whatsoever. Or if it does have lag, it's practically impossible to notice. It is really, really, really accurate. And, you know, I'm playing this on an LCD panel as well. And um, I don't feel any input lag. It's really good. And I should stop, stop talking there so I can play better. But uh, <laughs> that's just the way it is. And, of course, we can uh, use the hotkeys on the side to get back to the menu system. And we can, uh, you know configure certain things there. All right, so there you go. That is my fighting stick featuring the universal fighting board from Brook. Excellent. It's been an exciting build and I'm very, very happy with it. This thing weighs a ton. It's not gonna be moving anywhere. And I really do like the finish on it. The paint is automobile grade paint, so it's not gonna be getting chipped or scratched off or whatever. And as mentioned earlier, the little uh, transparent bottom just really looks nice. I mean, if you're really crazy, you could probably put some LEDs and uh, mod it up. All right. So, hope you like this video and maybe you're going to build yourself another joystick based upon this design. If you'd like a copy of uh, this uh, Astro City uh, cover for your Brook, uh, not Brook, sorry, your uh, fighting stick, um, I'll leave a link in the video description down below and you can uh, download it and uh, yeah, feel free to use it. Until next time guys, keep on gaming and enjoy your games. See ya!